Hello, this is Mr. Kent of MrKent.com and uh, with my Bebop uh, over the years uh, people have asked me about uh, the follow me function and of course I don't don't make use of it. I don't see any use of it. I don't climb mountains anymore. <laughs> I, I don't ride bicycles anymore. I don't even walk fast anymore. So the follow me function has never been anything that I was interested in. But recently my son gave me a Mavic to zoom which has the active track function in it and I tested that out going under some trees and it worked great and then when I had my granddaughter at the park uh, the other day I made a video and uh, what in that video if you watched it you'll see there's a pause where I'm just looking at my granddaughter uh, or the or the bebop uh, and we're just stopped there that's because I'm trying to get active track to follow that drone well I couldn't get it to lock up on it and so uh, about uh, several days ago, I decided I'm going to figure out a way to follow my own drone and fly two drones at the same time. So this video is uh, about the five different days I spent uh, at the park trying to get my, uh, my Mavic 2 to uh, follow my Bebop. So uh, let's go ahead and get started and uh, take a look at... Uh, what I went through. So this is day one. Okay, I put I put uh, I taped white paper onto the um, the bebop and uh, zeroed in on it. And uh, now you can see over there I'm changing from controlling the uh, Mavic to grabbing the controller for the for the bebop. And all the way through these videos from day one to day five, you'll you'll. Uh, that's what I do. I get I get the uh, the lock in on it, and then I switch to the to the bebop, and I start flying the bebop. And as you can see, I'm gone, and I'm not. <laughs> uh, it didn't hold the lock. Now it's looking at my T-shirt, uh, trying to lock on that. So uh, that didn't work, and I think probably I'm going to come back here and try again, and uh, get get it locked on again. Yep, there's its shadow. All right, now I'm going to go over to the Mavic controller again and uh, zero in on it. Zero in on the uh, on the Bebop, I think. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm going to zero in on that, and I'm going to try to track that. Now I'm getting really close this time, so it's going to work for a little while this time once I get it uh, connected. And of course, I'm new at this, so it's taken me a long time. Oh, by the way, I'm zooming in, seeing if that'll help. And I think it did. It may have helped. Uh, so uh, I zoomed in, and I'm going into Active Track. And uh, all right, I'm trying to get a good, good lock on it. That little green square is not enough. I should probably try again. We'll see what happens here. Well, I guess I'm going to go with it. I can't remember. That was several days ago. So, it's tracking my Bebop. And by the way, while I'm flying the Bebop, I'm looking over at the Mavic in the air, and I can see it's swiveling to turn, or yawing, as they would say. But uh, I lost, uh, lost contact with it, and uh, so uh, I think I'm going to try again here. Ooh, that looks good. There, I got a good... Now, yeah, I think I got it. Okay. And and you'll notice that it really does track it. Uh, but uh, when uh, the background changes, or uh, if I get too far away and it gets too small, then I lose it. On, on this particular day, that's what I ran into. So, uh, got it turned sideways, so I got a good fix on it. Now, I'm going to... I think I'm going to go sideways. And, oh, I'm going frontwards so now the Mavic is gonna try to follow I think if uh, if I remember right okay so now I'm going up and his uh, his gimbal is uh, keeping track of me now I'm gonna go back the other way and I'm I'm uh, <laughs> and there's a good reason to uh, turn on airplane mode and which uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just a good idea to turn it on but I not used to using the airplane mode. Okay, so now it's following that. You see, the only thing is I'm not moving. I'm not going very far. 
So as soon as I start moving and uh, getting smaller and things that you would normally do if you were tracking a drone, uh, you'll see that uh, pretty soon it's going to get lost and and uh, my day is ruined. <laughs> but so far it's following it. So it's not really doing too bad of a job as long as I stay slow and close. But I want to be able to follow it around the sky. I'm kind of spoiled that way. So uh, the B, the uh, the Mavic hasn't moved positions yet. It's just circling around and watching me, uh, watching me fly the Bebop. Now I'm going up in altitude, and he's going up in altitude. And at that point, we lose contact. So I decided, okay, I'm just going to go home and find something I can put on my drone that's bigger than a white piece of paper. And uh, we'll see what we can do on day two. All right. So the next day, I came out with something I had concocted the night before. Just a light piece of... Uh, white material and uh, I, I it's actually for insulating plants so it was airy it was light and it was white and so I was hoping that I'd be able to lock onto that and you can see that at this point uh, it's locked on but also it was a very windy day I mean it wasn't real gusty but just a steady breeze and uh, I don't think you'll notice I'm not locked onto the white cloth I'm locked on to the to the bebop <laughs> uh, so that's going to have to be changed before too long but anyway it's following the bebop it's amazing how well it follows uh, the only thing is is uh, everything I had trouble with was as soon as it started uh, getting further away it would it would lose because it's just too small of a target but anyway so there's uh, uh, now he's got he's lost contact with it so now I'm going to I'm going to do everything I can to see if I can get this to work on day 2. So I can see that the Mavic isn't swiveling around to follow the Bebop. Uh so I, I, obviously what I do is I get up and I go over and I grab the controller for the Mavic and I center the uh the flying uh Bebop in the middle of the screen and then I go into active track and I'm going to grab a hold of that white thing. There we go. Now click go. Okay. So now you notice how it jumps around. And boy, it really jumps. The uh, the Mavic jumps around to try to keep it in place. And uh, you can see how it's doing it. <laughs> and from the ground, it looks like the Mavic's kind of out of control trying to keep up with that thing. So I got a good fix on that cloth. And I'm going to fly away over here. And of course, as you get further away it loses contact. Got out of the green square and just kind of went on its way. In the meantime, I'm thinking that it's still connected because I'm looking at the controller on the on the Bebop. And uh, pretty soon I'll uh, I'll probably swivel or go sideways and see if the if the Mavic yaws when I do that. And of course right there I can see the Mavic is not swiveling or yawing or whatever you want to call it. So uh, uh, I've lost it again. I think I'm going to try to get it one more time in this video. Like I said, these were made several days ago. And uh, so we'll see what happens here. Yep, I'm coming back. I'm going to try again. You can see how the wind's blowing. And that I was hoping that that cloth would just hang nice and still. And uh, there he goes. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't hold nice and still. So I think probably uh, I gave up on trying to follow that because uh, it was, I tried a couple times and, and it didn't work. And maybe I tried more than that. And this is the only, only part that I saved. Oh, there he goes again. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can. Get him out there, and we're going to try again, maybe. 
I don't know, we'll see. I'm probably switching over to the Mavic controller. Yeah, there I go. I'll try to zero in on him again. Nope, I missed him. I think I'm going to give up and go home. So I went home and uh, we'll see what uh, what happens next. Well, on day three, I came up with a different idea. Instead of using a piece of cloth that would flip around and uh, uh, not be real steady, I thought I'd go to the store and spend three bucks and get some foam board. And, uh, and that's what I did. And I cut it so that it, uh, could sl uh, I cut it in half lengthwise and then I put slots so that it would go together uh, like you see here in the picture. And here I am at the airport, at the airport, I'm not flying airplanes. Here I am at the park and I'm getting all set up. And as you can see, I've got strings tied now to the bottom of the bebop and uh, getting them all untangled. which is not easy for me. I don't know if anything's <laughs> easy for me. All right, so I'm taking off the uh, lens cap and uh, going back. Now I'm gonna get my little invention here, my foam board. And this is gonna really be uh, nice and steady because it's uh, it's not like a piece of, uh, of material. All right, we're going to go. I think we're going to go high speed here. Get this stuff done and get flying here. Decided, okay maybe I could I could uh, tomorrow I'll come back and I'll make that a little more aerodynamic so the wind doesn't catch the top of those square pieces but that uh, just flows right on past them well day four here we go start the day off having to repair the sprinkler system and I mean I had to dig and dig and dig and dig and uh, so I was pretty tired so in the evening rather than going over to the park I decided I'll just try this stuff in my backyard <clears throat> so here I am oh and by the way uh, you can see I'm calibrating the uh, the drone because after all that banging around and crashing I, I had a uh, uh, a motor uh, error and you can see me I'm having to recalibrate it because it really got messed up so uh, at this point in time, <laughs> not only am I tired, you can hear me groaning. I'll be quiet so you can hear me groaning. But uh, I, I spent a big part of the day digging and locating and uh, repairing sprinkler systems. So here I've got this thing. What I've done is I've trimmed it down and made it more streamlined instead of just a couple of square uh, pieces of foam board. And uh, so we'll see how that works. Uh, this is my backyard instead of uh, going to the park. And uh, you hear that? <clears throat> yep, I was pretty tired. And my <clears throat> my foam board got kind of messed up in the process. 
It won't stand up like I want it to. Listen to me, I'm just so tired. <laughs> <laughs> and that chair's got mud all over it from where I <clears throat> took my boots off. And we'll sit in this chair. <laughs> I was tired. Alright, so here we go. Uh, it should work better this time. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Nope, not making any difference. But you'll notice on the Bebop video it wasn't as violent as it was when I was at the park. So the taper helped. And uh, so then uh, I landed. Now here's here's the Bebop video. And uh, so as it comes up, you'll notice it's getting jerked around, but you don't see the uh, the edges of the camera, which some people mistake for the props. Uh, it just isn't working. And so uh, I decided, okay, I'm gonna run in the house and make it a little bit different. So I did. I still had enough energy to do those kind of things. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. You notice how I made it pointed? That should help. At least that's what I thought. No. Nope. No deal. I got to land it without tangling the strings up in my props, too. That's another issue I had. I never got them tangled up, but I was worried about it. Now watch the... This is the Bebop's video, and it's getting shaked around a lot like uh, the first time that but anyway so uh, as it turned out um, it didn't uh, <laughs> it didn't work either but I decided to take a real quick trip around the yard actually I did it really slow but I wanted to make sure my my bebop still worked for just flying around because I had been jerking it around had a motor error and had to recalibrate and so I just went for a real quick ride and uh, uh, I'm going to try one more thing, and then I'll probably... Day 5, the final test. The night before, I threw all that stuff in the garbage, and I said, okay, I'm, I'm through with this. But then I got to thinking, wait a minute, I didn't, I didn't try putting it on top of the Bebop. So I carved it and glued it together and made this little uh, pyramid thing, and I'm getting ready to hook it on, over, on, top, of the, uh, on top of the Bebop. And there it is sitting there like that and I'm using rubber bands that I use to hold the wings on my five foot wingspan RC plane so they're uh, credible they won't they won't come apart and uh, I get this thing put on there and my cap can uh, got out of adjustment and I you can't I can't you I can't show you some of the things that happen but in the process of this that uh, that pyramid got tilted sideways, so uh, either the right side or the left side dropped down so close to the props that I was real careful flying it back. So here we go. We're going to take off, and then um, uh, it's still a small target, and um, so I, I got the uh, the bebop sitting on the ground. I just have to find it with the Mavic, and then I'll go into uh, active track. And I'm going to try to get that that uh, pyramid. Now, if somebody was to try this and not cut it to a pyramid, and just make big squares, leave it like it originally looked, uh, it might track better. But I'm not going to try to. I've I've crashed my <laughs> I've crashed my drone. Had to re re uh, calibrate it. I've had to uh, reset. Uh, so I because I had a motor failure uh, on one of the whatever happened. The jumping around or something and then flying back with this thing when I was all finished it got tilted sideways so that uh, one of the little wings out to the side was real close to the props and I was real careful to fly it back but as you will see um, I am able to get a fix on it and have uh, uh, the Mavic uh, catch it you know and and it'll follow it I, if I can get a big enough square It'll follow it, and that's not a big enough square there. So let's try again there. Now, whoop, there. Now that's a good square, okay? But I, as you'll see, as in past, uh, on uh, previous days, as it gets out away from the 
the Mavic and uh, starts moving, then it loses contact. But we'll watch this as it goes here. And, and uh, the Mavic is yawing, and so I'm flying the Bebop, and I'm watching uh, the, the Mavic and seeing if it's yawing to the left or the right. And uh, it is, and so I make sure I don't go too fast because I don't want to lose it. And uh, I don't know why I'm sitting there like that, but anyway, uh, I, it's too far back. <laughs> too many confusing things. All right, here we go. We're going to fly now. And there he goes, and as soon as he got into the background, and when the background changed, we lost contact. So, uh, somebody else is going to have to carry on this experiment. I've almost crashed and ruined my Bebop, and I don't want to hurt that. So, as the Bebop flies into the sunset, I want to thank you for watching, and uh, uh, God bless you.